Welcome, welcome, welcome. I have another framing video, as promised. Um, but I have um, some show and tell. I don't think I have shown these completed pieces on camera yet. Um, if you're on the Facebook group, you've probably seen them. I'm pretty sure I posted photos of them. But I wanted to show you on video as well. So we have this gorgeous painted unicorn. So cool. I love it. I love it with the moon and the stars on her forehead and the Indian type, Native American, excuse me, Native American type headdress. Really, really beautiful. So there's that one. And then this one I'm very disappointed in, but I knew it was going to be too small. So I had a little bit of a heads up knowing going in. But what I did was I made the flowers. I used my rhinestone leftovers. So I just grabbed colors that were similar to what the drills were. So it is a partial rhinestone and it is a partial regular drill. So, anyway, whoops, turned her upside down on you. So there she is. She's still cute. I know what she's supposed to look like, um, but she probably will never go into a frame. Because you can't see her arm. This is supposed to be her arm extended, and it just disappears into the background. So I need to find this one um, probably a 50 centimeter square might be better maybe even 40 10 extra centimeters might help but this is just a 30 by 30 and I did only pay a few dollars for her so it's really not that big of a deal this one I've had for a really long time and I was not going to um I wasn't going to finish it I wasn't going to um, work on it but I, when I was going through and re reorganizing my paintings, I decided, you know, why not? And it's actually pretty cute. I like, you can see the sparkle in the bear and then the little lantern and the horse toy and the pine cone over here. So it's still pretty cute. Oh, I'm stuck to my elbow. It's still pretty cute, but I don't know if I'll ever frame it. I might end up giving it as a gift at some point. But it is a really nice, stiff canvas. It's a really good quality piece. It's printed really nicely. The drills were all really good. And it took me all of like an hour to do. So there's that one. And then the last show and tell I have for you is this beauty. This gorgeous guy here. So this is all rhinestones. And a few special stones. Get it turned there so you can see the sparkle in it. And it is a partial, so it's just the flowers and the peacock, as you can see there. This is another 30 by 40. So he is gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. So I've got another stack um, down here beside me that I'm going to be framing for you. The first one I'm going to frame is this, which is another one that I customized. I changed the colors on her, made her more blue instead of mostly yellow, using up a lot of my extra rhinestones. So here you can see the colors and I changed her necklace. Um, I gave her uh, mostly blue stones with two special stones there. I also changed what the bigger stones were on her chest, um, all using leftovers from other paintings. I like how she turned out. I really like the blue and I like it. I like this background. The other one that I have um, that I did the way they suggest it um, ha is the one with the frame around it. So I liked this one is different. That's another reason I went ahead and did her different. And that's why I bought two of them. Um, because the one has the frame and then this one is just the really pretty background. So let's go ahead and jump into this. 
Um, this is a dollar store, 11 by 14 frame. And it does have the brown. Um, it's a brown frame. And what I'm going to do is I am going to spray paint the frame gold. Might be a little too much, but we're going to see how it turns out. So I'm going to take this apart and then I'm going to run outside and spray this and then I will be back to show you how it looks. I have spray painted other frames in the past and they turn out really well. So I'm not worried about that part. I'm just concerned that the gold might be too much with the diamonds. So we're going to find out. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay. So we are back with a gold frame. It's lovely. Set that aside. And now we need to work on our matting. Now I mentioned in the other video, I do what I call reverse matting. And that is the painting sits on top of what is considered the matte piece, which is backwards. I know, but, um, I don't know, that's just how I started doing it to make it a little bit easier on myself. And also to make it a little bit more cost friendly, <laughs> so to speak. A little bit more affordable, so you don't have to go buy a mat. Because I know at Hobby Lobby, which is the only place near me where I can get mats cut, it's $10 no matter what size mat you need. You have to buy the whole giant board and then they charge you $2 per cut. So matting can be kind of expensive. So I started doing this way. Um, just to be more, to be, I don't want to say cheaper because that sounds bad, but um, to make it more affordable. Because I'm, you know, I'm already frugal when it comes to purchasing the paintings, and I don't want to spend a bunch more on framing than I even pay for the painting itself. So I'm trying to keep it. Plus, I have a ton of scrap of paper in my craft room. So I just thought, well, why can't I use that paper? It works just as well. And from a distance, I think it looks just as good. Now, this is a 30 by 40 painting. So here is the picture that comes in the frame. So this gives you an idea of how much, actually let's use the back of the, so you can see better, the black instead of the white. So this shows you how much of a mat I need to create for this painting. So you can see it's about a quarter of an, maybe three quarters of an inch on the top and bottom, and then about an inch on each side. So I could easily create that with my scrap of paper. I chose this dark gray for the mat on this piece because I really want the owl to pop out. And this, there's a little bit of the dark gray here in the background. And I really think that looks nice in contrast with the light colors. So we have 11 by 14. My paper is only 12 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut 2 inches for the top, 2 inches for the bottom, and then um, an inch on each side. So what that will do is it will give me enough to go from top to bottom in the frame. Okay, so I will show you what I'm talking about. First off, we're going to go this direction. So I'm going to cut three and three. So we have three by 12 twice. And then I'm going to cut an inch. So that gives me 11. And then I'm going to cut two inches. I think I, I said differently. I changed up my um, 
So I'm going to cut two inches and two inches. So now we have two by 11 and we have three by 12, two of each. So now we will take the paper that comes with the frame and I use that for my sizing. So we have the 11 inch pieces go at the top and the bottom, just like so, top and bottom. And then the 12 inch pieces are gonna go underneath. Now let's just do it this way instead of trying to. So I center one on the left centering it top to bottom, I mean. And then the right will also get one centered top to bottom. And then we have the two inch by 11 inch pieces that will go to finish our mat. Now, this gives me a complete perimeter all the way around my piece. So when I put her in place, she looks great. Now, when you're up close, you can see these two pieces. And if it really bothers you, you can miter your corners, but given this method, you're still gonna have a gap. So I have found, and I have done this on more than one of my paintings that I have um, hanging on the walls already. When you are back a distance from it, you cannot see that there is a piece of paper going across the top and the bottom. So again, this is a little bit of a cheater method and I think it works out really well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these pieces to the piece that actually came with the frame. So I'm gonna put a strip all the way around of glue and then put everything back in place. So again, centering from top to bottom, lining up to the very edge like so, repeating on the other side, lining up to the very edge, centering from top to bottom. And then on the bottom and top, we line up with the three edges, just like so. All right, so that is glued in place. They are not moving. Now you can see the edge of the paper here, but again, when we get that in the frame, it is not going to show. Now, to glue her in place, I'm just gonna put a little bit behind her necklace some behind her, be her beak, and then little dots behind her toes. These are the biggest gems, and I don't wanna take a chance on any glue showing through the front. So now we eyeball and place her on the mat that I created, and then we use the ruler to double check that she is centered. And she is looking beautiful. Okay. And okay. All right. So now I will push down where the glue is behind. Again, that just keeps her from shifting and sliding inside the frame. Where did I put my frame? Okay. back in place. And please be very careful when you're handling this glass, it will cut you. I speak from experience on that. And then we're going to slide this in place and then put our backing and secure it with the little tabs.
I did not worry about spraying the back, but it did get some overspray, so it covers, It's you can see a little bit of the gold there. But here we have the finished piece. Oh, you can't see that at all, can you? Here, let's lift this up. There she is. Beautiful, right? I love, I love it. I love it with the gold frame. It brings out the yellow just enough. Shows off her sparkliness. Super cute. Really happy with that. So keep that in mind. You can always um, spray paint your frames. If you don't like the color of them, just spray paint it and there you go. Change it all together. All right, so the next one I'm going to do, I'm going to use black. And it is the owl with the purse again, but this is the way she's meant to look. So she's got blue outlining everything, and she's got a lot of um, yellow and white in her chest and yellow around her face. So this is the way she is coated. And the other one I just showed you is the way I changed it. You can see I took out all the orange in her tail. Her tail is all blue, and, um, blue in the other one, and she doesn't have any orange. I don't think I put any orange at all in that one. So again, we have the 11 by 14 frame. I'm going to leave the brown for the frame on this one because of the frame that's printed on this one. I'm going to leave the brown. I'll clean up some of my mess here. I'm getting, I got the trash can right beside me, but I keep just putting the paper or the trash right here. So. Just get rid of that mess. Now these are big enough scraps that I will save and I will use them on cards. So I will not throw those away. All right, clean slate, ready to go. All right, now, like I said, I'm gonna keep this frame brown. Plus I want them to be different. I plan on hanging them side by side. Um, I know, I'm weird, putting two of the same. Uh-oh, I have a little bit of an issue here. The little tab things are not stuck in the frame, and you can see here this piece just flaked right off. So I need to do a little bit of doctoring to make sure I can get, because there's only one tab on this side, so I need at least one other tab in here. So I'm going to use my knife and I'm going to cut a little tiny slit into this frame. This, um, I'm guessing this is plastic. This is, well, maybe it is wood because it's going in pretty easily. My knife is going in pretty easily. So maybe it is wood. And then I'm just going to take one of these and just slide it in to the little cut I created. And then I can just bend it up there. All right, so at least I have one. I think I'm going to save this in case I completely lose one altogether. Whoops, go ahead and put the glass back in. So just like the previous one, we're going to do the same cuts. So let me grab my trimmer. And this piece of paper does not have the little barcode strip on it, so I don't need to cut that off. So we're going to cut two pieces at three inches, and then we cut this piece, cut an inch off of the 12 inch side, and then we cut two at two inches. And I'll put this up here, save that for another project. Grab my paper that came in the frame. We put our three inch pieces on the side. Let me go ahead and put, since we did this just a minute ago, 
I don't need to go through it again. I'll just do it, say it as I'm doing it. How's that sound? So bead of glue all the way around the perimeter. Center from top to bottom. Line up along the edge, one three inch piece. Repeat on the other side. And then top and bottom, get a two inch piece lined up on all three edges. It's a little bit of glue overhang there. And then again at the top. So we have a nice little matted piece there. Or frame, I should say. I'm just wiping the glue off so I don't smudge glue anywhere. Now we need to trim off the excess of the canvas. Now this piece is far enough away, or I should say the drills are far enough away from my cutting area where I'm going to use my blade and my ruler on all four sides. And I am putting the ruler up just a tiny bit past the color so I don't have a white edge. Two down. I just, I don't know why this painting, I just love this painting so much. This one and the, um, the next one I'm going to show you, I have bought multiples of. Like this specific painting here, I have bought her four times. And I had the initial intention of changing the colors on all four of them. I was going to do like a, a set of four um, and have each one a different color. But then I decided that that was a little much. So I have the two and then the other two, um, if you are a one of my winners from my contests, it's not really a contest, giveaways, then those were two of the prizes for two of these other girls. So I'm going to put glue along her necklace like I did before on her beak. And I can see through the canvas enough where I can see where the glue needs to go. And then I'm going to eyeball the center, or to center it, I mean. And then I'm going to double check my measurements with my ruler. So let's try to get her in place. We have a half an inch, just under half an inch. So let's scooch this down just a hair. So we are at three eighths and then I should be three quarters of an inch, give or take on each side. Okay, so she is in place, nice and cute in her little black frame. And let me pull this over without cutting myself on the glass and put her in place. Okay. And then turn, make sure you have your hanger in the right place because I can't tell you how many times I've had to take that off and turn it around. And then we're just going to push the little tabs down. And I'm going to push this one in a little bit further because I didn't get it in quite deep enough. All right not wanting to stay. I don't, I'm going to have to rig that a little bit differently there. It's not going to stay. Had to add some Gorilla Glue to it in a minute. So there she is. Tilt this up, let you see a little bit better. Looks really nice. So there she is, Miss America. Ta-da!
Isn't she cute? I just love her. She's just so sweet. All right. We don't need to put that down quite so far. Okay. Moving on to our next piece is another one of my favorites. And I have quite a few of the versions of this gal. So this time I'm going to use red and this paper has some polka dots on it. Here she is. This is our special drill fancy owl. She's got her bow in her hair and her fancy necklaces, some um, gems on her eyebrows and a bracelet on her ankle. She is ready for a party. She's got her little dragonfly friend with her. This just cracks me up. She's hilarious. So funny. So again, I'm using an 11 by 14 frame and this time it is black. And I'm going to keep the black instead of spray painting it. I think it will look... Oh, look at that. Just lost another splint. I guess you call it. Is that what you call these photo splints? I don't know what you call them. Let's open this up, get it ready. Sometimes they're so far down, it hurts my fingers to bend them up. All right. Put those there those there and put this here. So we're going to trim off that border again and I'm going to use my blade and my ruler and I'm going to cut a little bit higher than I have been on this one because I want a little bit more of the color to show for the matting. There's a lot of blank space on this one, and I'm not crazy about that. So I'm doing, it's about, a, I'd say about an eighth of an inch that I am doing. And it's, it makes it easier for me because they have put a yellow border around the perimeter. So even though this side where it's white, I can still see where the painting is supposed to end. And makes it easy enough for me. To line up my ruler so I can see that I'm getting a straight cut. Okay. Last side. All right. So this is another 30 by 40. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did the last two times. So I'm hoping that by repeating myself enough on this, you guys are gonna get the hang of it as well. And you can frame some of your paintings in the same manner. So we have two three by 12 inch cuts. And we take off an inch on the 12 inch side. And we have two two inch cuts. I love this polka dot paper. I call it Swiss dots. I don't know if that's really what it's called. I don't know, but I like it. In my Joann's, my local Joann's store has it. It's from, um, I don't know, because I cut it off. Oh, it's basil. Duh. Basil paper. Should have known that. All the good paper comes from basil. So I'm grabbing the piece that comes with the, can the frame, turning it over, putting our glue down. And again, remember, this glue is strictly to keep things from shifting. Don't have to worry about it falling out of the frame. I'm just not wanting anything to shift. So we're centering a three inch piece on this side 
and on this side wipe the glue off my arm <laughs> oh, and then we're putting the two inch piece on the bottom and on the top all righty and then like the others i'm going to pick the biggest stones and put a little bit of glue in place to hold it Put one right between her eyes because again we don't need a lot just to keep her from sliding around and then we will center her and then double check my measurements double check my eyeballs I should say so we have just under half an inch need to come down just a hair because I want three-eighths of an inch top and bottom and then approximately an inch on each side Okay, there we go. Just push that glue down for it to take, for it to set. And then we will put her in her glass. And then making sure that the hanger is at the top where it needs to be and securing everything in place so once you get the hang of this you can see how quick it goes so it doesn't have to be a long involved ordeal getting everything framed so there she is with her red frame matting. Ooh, I like it. Turned out really cute. I like that a lot. Super, super cute. Let's tilt you up just a little bit more. There she is. Now you can see her better. It's just hard to not get a glare on the glass. I really like the red with it. The red really sets it off, I think. Super cute. Adorable. All right, now what do I do? Oh, I had started stacking them on this side of me and then I put this one over here on this side of me, so I lost it for a minute. Okay, so our next one that we're going to frame, I'll put you back down a little bit so you can see my work surface, is the same image, but it is the regular drill version. So you can see it's completely different. Super, super cute still, but I like that just her eyeballs are not done. You get to do the bow and even the dragonfly on this one. But I like that the background is still the same, so she's going to look similar. And I chose a burgundy, darker red, um, not really burgundy, it's more of a brick red, um, to go with this one so they still kind of match, um, but they're not quite the same. I didn't want them too different. This is another one of those 12 by 12 collage frames. Let's get it ready to go. I hope you all like these framing videos. I don't know. I hope they're not boring. But I just, I know a lot of people struggle with how to frame their pieces. So I just want to 
give you an idea of how it can be done without costing you $50, 60 $70. Ah, yummy, yummy. I see. All right, now this one, this one edge I have to use my scissors on because the drill is literally right up to the very edge. But I will use my blade on the other three sides. I'm pretty good at eyeballing stuff, but cutting straight is not easy to do, even when you have a line to follow. So I would prefer to just go ahead and use my blade and not struggle. Plus, it feels like it goes a lot quicker this way also. I do have two more of this owl. I have the purple version in regular drills and in special drills. So I don't know where I'm going to hang these yet, but I want to hang them in a place where I can put all of them together. Even though they're different, they are the same, you know, basically the same subject. And I've done that with the butterflies, those the butterflies where they have all the different backgrounds of. I've got two of those hanging in my entryway and I'm waiting to get the other colors um, so I can hang them all together. All right, so now this is the 12 by 12 frame. So all I'm doing here is cutting off the barcode strip. I don't have to cut anything else on this paper because the frame is the size of the paper. So all we have to do is take all these extra pieces that I'm going to leave in here, stack them, and then put some glue in the middle here, and center her on the paper. Just like that. Maybe. Now, let's see how I did. Yeah. It needs to come up and over. Well, the excess on this canvas, there's a lot of excess sticky on this canvas, and if you haven't noticed, it keeps sticking to me. So this is another reason why I want it behind glass. I still had it way off. All right. Okay, so there she is, ready to go in her glass. I like the instant gratification of framing things this way, especially with the partials like this, the ones that are pretty quick projects. Then you get them framed quick and it's like, ah, oh, it's done, it's beautiful. And ready to either be gifted or hung, whatever you decide to do with your pieces. I do both, I hang them up, I have a drawer that has completed ones that I will probably never frame. And then I have a bunch that I have given as gifts as well. So here she is done. What was that? Less than five minutes and she's in a frame and ready to go on the wall next to her buddy. So let's tilt up. So we can look side by side. How they are the same but different. Super cute. Okay. We'll do one more. We'll stick with our owl theme right here. And we'll do this guy or gal, whatever she is. 
I love her. You can see she's a special drill partial. And I chose to use yellow for the paper, for the matting. And it is a glitter paper to bring out the sparkle and to bring out the yellow in the background. Okay. This is the same collage frame again. So all we have to do is trim off the barcode piece on this paper. Oh, getting having bad luck with these frames today. As long as you have enough to hold it, and again, it's going on the wall. It's not going to be mush, pushed around. Now, if these were tabletop frames, um, I would say that you wouldn't want to risk it if you didn't have enough to secure it. But since these are hanging on the wall, they're not going to get bumped around, and you're not going to have to pick them up to dust and clean and all that. So they will be sturdy enough or secure enough, not sturdy enough, secure enough to stay in place. Now this one I'm going to cut by hand because there are larger beads around the side, larger stones. And I know my ruler will not lay flat enough for me to get a straight edge. So instead of risking it, I will just do it by hand. And since it's printed all the way around, it's nice and easy to see where I need to cut. So I just need to go a little bit slower and be more precise with my scissor placement. It's hard to talk and cut. Ever notice that? I think I want to start talking and then it's like, oh. Don't go crooked. A weird little sound. On the home stretch. Yay. Oh, see, I went crooked. Darn it. A little tiny bit of white showing. I just need to get a little bit closer to my face. My vision has been really blurry lately. It's driving me crazy. And this is a fairly new prescription. I just got this prescription in October, so I find it hard to believe my eyes have changed. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on with my vision, but it's quite annoying having blurry vision all the time. Okay, so let's grab our little stack. And I am going to put glue around her eyes and around her beak. Again, just to keep it from showing on the edges or in the center. And then we are going to get her in the right place, get rid of the cat hair that's on the extra adhesive. Cat hair everywhere! It's like glitter. Cat hair is like glitter. Have you ever noticed that? It gets in the strangest places. All right, so let's see how I've done here. Whoops. All right, I did good on that one. Okay. I'm gonna flip her over. And then put our backing in and she will be done as well. 
Now, if you are giving these as gifts, I suggest that you sign the back. You can buy a white gel pen or you could just sign a small piece of paper and you know attach it here if you don't have a gel pen. Um, at least put the date, the year. Um, I put the month and the year on the back of my pieces just so I know when I completed them. Stand you guys up a little bit. There she is. Isn't she pretty? I love that yellow. It kind of, I mean, it just, I think it meshes perfectly. It's a beautiful piece. Really nice. I like it. These drills make it look like it's wrinkled between her eyes. But you can see it's just the light drills. Isn't that a weird effect? It makes it look like a wrinkled piece in the canvas on camera. All right, so there you have it. There are, let's see, how many did we do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've done like nine framings in the last hour, hour and a half maybe it took me all together. So these are would be great gifts. You can hang them on your wall for easy decor. Um, whatever you decide to do. But I think this is really important. Um, we spend all this time and effort making these pieces and putting our love into them and enjoying them. Why not be able to frame a large quantity of them and spread that? You can um, donate these to a church, to a nursing home. Oh my gosh, <gasps> that's an awesome idea. These ones that you aren't crazy about or... Like, I've bought so many that I just want to see what it looks like when it's done. Like this one. These would be awesome. You could donate them to a nursing home or even to a hospice center. And they could hang these up in patient areas um, just to spread a little cheer, you know? It's a good idea. I think I'm going to do that. Um, we have a hospice center right up the road from us. We actually have two within... Um, less than 20 minutes. So that is a great idea. I just thought of that now. So um, I will see y'all soon. And thanks for watching. And um, subscribe. And check the description box because I do have some products that I have designed. Um, a hoodie and a t-shirt, a mug, a tote bag, some fun things that you can purchase. And um, have some fun sharing your joy and love of diamond painting and um i'll be back with you real soon thanks for watching